Joining me as always, our producer slash co-host, Mr. Albert Sosa, Wildcat Insiders, Mr. Sam Castro, Mr. Alan Sanchez, and taking us back to the old school, y'all know his name, y'all know his number, number 51, Brian Pettis. Last but not least, providing technical support, Double J. to you live from 5D Steakhouse, Season 4, Episode 4. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This episode, we're going to be talking about last week's game between your very own Carissa Springs Fighting Wildcats and the Floresville Tigers. Also, also we're going to preview uh, Cotula, our next game this Friday. Yeah, this, we're going to be game. previewing the next game between your Fighting Wildcats and the visiting Cthulhu Cthulhu Cowboys. 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 If you guys are wondering where I'm going to be at, I'm going to be at the concession stand again. I'm a band dad. I will be at the visitor side concession stand, and uh, we're going to be selling some good stuff over there on the opposite side. So hey, you got, but you got when you go to the games, you got to listen to what's being announced. That way, you know what's being served. And you know what? I have a good angle to look at the at the uh, at the press box from the visitor side concession stand. So. I'm I'm really looking forward to looking at you, Ernest, announce. So I'm, I'm ready. I'm excited. The Wildcat special? The Wildcat special. Hey, speaking wa- of Wildcat specials, I know that there's a Wildcat special at 5Ds. One of our platinum sponsors. No, he's, are they platinum? Platinum, platinum he sponsors? He is yeah. one of the best platinum. sponsors. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so uh, like the best? Let's, let's, the best. let's start it off, guys. Let's start it so, off good. So let's go ahead and... <laughs> Speaking of sponsors, <laughs> we're going to start off with the platinum sponsor. We do have uh, 5D Steakhouse and Grill. We also have Smoke and D's Competition Barbecue. Uh, want to give a shout out to another sponsor, Mr. Matthew Signs from Money Graphics. Yes, sir. And also we have the Javelin. The Javelin. The Carrizo Carrizo Springs Javelin. Hey, the McDaniels. Thank you for all you do. And sponsoring the tailgate, which we haven't chosen a date, Dr. Alfonso Luevano. So. We will be letting you guys know when Purple Rain Sports is going to do the tailgate. Um, we're we're going to be giving out burgers and dogs before one of these games. So also also we happens. have a, a Middle Rio Grand 911. Um, you know they they give services to to help out all the counties from uh, Maverick to LaSalle to Edwards County. Real. Edwards Real. So it's a big area they have to cover. Uh, they they get all the first responders to to help out to get to where they need to be. So that's a big program there, Mr. Raul, Raul Diaz. Ralu. 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 Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Big shout out to Ralu. All right, guys, we're going to jump into last week's game between the Wildcats and the Tigers. Uh, who wants to start it off? Well, you know, I'll go ahead and start it off. You know, the Wildcat had a really, really big defensive stand initially on the first possession for the, uh, the, the Floresville guys had. Um, put a good stop. You know, defense played lights out in our first series. Got the ball back and scored, right? We scored right, right after first, that yeah. first stop. And then after that, it just, things seemed to just kind of fall apart, you know, for the Wildcats. Actually, no, no. Actually, they, we scored on our first possession, like uh, like you said. Um, when we when we went back on defense, we were doing actually really well. Uh, oh, the yeah, first, we, we did. We held them. Big play. The first yeah, first two, three plays, we held them. We yeah. actually had them down to a, so got, a third, got, and, third and 20. Hold on one second. Third and twenty, and they were down. <laughs> they were back to our to their own forty-yard line until they threw a sixty-yard pass, pass, and okay. that's when it actually went downhill yeah, you know, from the, there. The defense, as far as from a running standpoint, as far as down the middle and to certain sides of it, is pretty much a shutout defense. They just had a really, really hard time. The linebackers, defensive ends, and even the linemen were doing a really good job of keeping the ball from coming up the middle, but it just seemed like they were struggling. Pass the line of scrimmage. You know, they were struggling in the secondary. 
And, I, and it seems like when Floresville picked up on that, made their adjustments, they, uh, they, they exploited, the, yeah. they attacked the weakness of the secondary. So it just, it, it, it almost, it was really tough, a tough game for the Wildcats after that point. But what I was going to say before I was really interrupted by Sanchez here, mm -hmm. uh, one glaring thing that stands out, if you look at the stats, the overall stats, the total stats, uh, Wildcats had 322 total yards, Florizo had 319 total yards. What that tells me is, you know, you, you could be grinding, 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 but when you have a big play guy like they do, like, you know, quarterback just throws it up in the air, receiver gets to it, which, uh, I mean, their top receiver for Florizo, I think, had 168 yards re receiving. So wow, you, you had much. like seven catches only. That's too much. And he had three touchdowns. You know, he had two receiving touchdowns, and he had that punt return for a touchdown. So you, when you have those kind of big play guys, it's tough. It's tough to, to you know, fight against that. So yeah, what you know, it, it, it's one thing to have the yardage, but it's another thing to have the points, to have the, the score. Yeah, you that's know? the thing. So yeah. uh, Carrizo did put up a pretty decent amount of yards, but we just couldn't get it into the end zone, you know. At least in the first half, we just really couldn't get Second quarter. The second quarter was the, the – that's, they scored 28 points in the second quarter. Mars will open it up so, right there. Yeah, that's, that's the, the one. And then they couldn't catch up after that. So it was pretty tough. That was that big second quarter. That's when they had the, the interception return. 42 um, yards. Yeah. 42 yard interception. Yeah, so it was, it was uh, uh, that, that's pretty tough when you, when you have to face stuff like that. Well, that, that's the whole deal. In any game, there's always a big play that kind of breaks it. Yeah. And the way I look at the way we have been playing is it's a brand new windshield on a car once once you get that crack that crack's gonna run and you have the option at that time to fix that crack and if you don't fix it it runs the whole way and what's going on is i don't think that we're fixing the cracks when they happen so y'all guys like that i see everybody Dude, nodding their head i think we should change his name to la voz do you do you Mr. work metaphor do you Mr. work for that right here do you work for that <laughs> windshield guy okay. That's I've been one. reading a lot. I like that one. I like that one. Really, that's, that's really don't want to see many cracks. You know, what, we, what, what we used to call it is you always want Uncle Mo on your side. You know who Uncle Mo is? Momentum. You always that's want it. that momentum on your side. So get Uncle, Uncle Mo on your Uncle side. Uncle who? Uncle Mo. Uh, Adan. Uncle Mo? Momentum, sir. Oh, momentum. Adan had a concussion momentum. that game when he said that. <laughs> that's what you want on your side. So, I mean, once Florso got it after those first couple, I mean, it was, it's it was tough, hard man. to it, get it's back. Tough to, you know, it's tough to stop somebody's momentum until you make a big play. That's the only time that you stop that momentum. Yes, so the Wildcats need to focus on starting their own momentum and stopping others' momentum before it gets too big. See, and the defense came back on the third quarter and we're, we're stopping them until the 25-yard touchdown pass. And then yeah. there was a kickoff return. And, I mean, it, it there, there were a lot of things that kind of worked against the Wildcats. I mean, there were some missed opportunities on the offensive side. But you can't really say much. You know, how many times have we heard, you know, defense wins championships? So... As these kids improve, I, I kind of feel like the defense will keep them in the game if we can just move the ball a little bit more. 322 yeah. yards is nothing to cry about. Yeah, but what but everybody we, has to remember is they're a young team. Check this out, guys. Check this out. Check this out. Look at these out. wings. We got five some wings here five from 5Ds. Wings. Get them on the camera there. Hey, I don't know, I don't know if y'all ever come to 5Ds and had the wings, but they're really good. Really, really good. Sir, we recommend them. All food here at Five Bees is pretty good. So um, let's go ahead and wait till our break so it's to start uh, eating. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It'd be nice. That's, that's and, your and, uh, I get focused on the tired. podcast Ooh, and the I eat so one good, wing. I really eat. Who's I paying for this right here, man? <laughs> okay. Keep going. <laughs> so we we've, we've determined that the momentum was built by the Tigers and they never let up. Yeah. And I think that a lot has to do with we can't quite figure it out how to stop it. So once we figure that out and what Wildcat Nation has to remember is this is a very, very young team. True. That's true. So once, like I've said it for four years already, going into the fourth year, it doesn't really matter, guys, what our record is going into district as long as we fix our problems when By district, district starts. Time to get that. It's a, remember, it's a brand new, uh, it's a young team with a brand new athletic director, brand new head coach. Pretty much staff, offense, too. offense. Brand new defensive scheme, brand new, pretty much everything. Yeah, yeah. everything's brand pretty new, new, and even most of the assistant coaches are all pretty much new. We have a couple that have been here for a while, but you know, the OC's new, the DC's new, and of course, the head coach is new. So, and then the program itself, they're running it from the shotgun offense, yeah. and they're running a bit of a spread, you know. So, it's just you know, they're just learning 
as far as and building from from what they they already knew. So, uh, but like I said, you know the the cats still have some work to do. I hope that they can recognize the uh, weaknesses because good teams, good coaches, opposing coaches, they're going to pick up and they're going to exploit those weaknesses. So I yeah. hope that we can get them ironed out, get some work done, and um, you know I, I'm I'm really I'm really excited about what's still to come. Positive yeah. note for me, I really like the way the the D line, the linebackers played this game. I mean, I know sometimes we talk about. Uh, not having, not, you know, what we're losing that bad, not putting your head down and not shrugging your shoulders and any of that stuff. That, that D-line, that those linebackers that I saw were always running back and forth. You saw those kids going towards the, uh, the sideline, and you could always see some of those kids running up. Hey, but there's a lot of things players. that we could build off of. A lot of things to build off of. And, and you know how you're talking about momentum. I think in every single game so far, the defense has held their own. Even though the score may not show it, but the defense is growing, they're learning. You know, if, if somebody's weak, a little bit weaker on this side, well, maybe the guy that's stronger can pick up that, that slack on that, that end. But I'm really optimistic going into to the next game. Uh, it's gonna be a, a test for us. We've been playing bigger teams. I think they've been both 5A. Yes, yeah, uh, 6A. 6A, 5A, 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 5A,
Hey, well, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and go a little bit offensive to this side. I'm going to give it to the – I'm going to use Josh on a – Josh and Mark had good touches on the ball. I mean, 143 yards, that's pretty good for a running back. I mean, we haven't had that in a while as far as rushing on any other games. And Mark, he just continues to pound, grind on that, on that field, man. I mean, anytime he has to keep that ball, he's, gonna, he's punishing the defense the way I see it. So I'm going to go with Mark and Josh and, uh, on that, on offense. There you go. I guess my turn. I'll go, I'll go offensive as well. Um, Avery Ramirez has been catching a lot of those passes. You know, he does a right receiver screen. He takes a lot of punishment a lot. And he still stands there and catches that ball, you know, holds on to the ball even though, you know, because you have the, the coverage that they usually have. They'll have a cover two or, or they'll have three uh, safety on top and somebody's going to come right at him. And if he's not blocked, I mean, he's, he has to catch that football. It's not going to be a fumble. And he's caught it every single time. And in this game, he had two catches for 35 yards, which gives, me, gives him an average of 17.5, which is, that's, I mean, that's, that's pretty great. good. That's awesome. For a sophomore. He's a sophomore as well, right? There you yeah. go. So I'm going to go with Avery Ramirez for this one. Family, my nephew. Oh, man. That's you know what? Let me change it then. The I didn't reason. know that. Probably the reason. Oh, my God. No. It, you know what runs on the family? It's side. It, it runs on the Ramirez family. Side. It's Sanchez. Oh, I didn't know that. Sanchez's side. <laughs> oh, man. Actually, it's a combination of both. Okay. Because they're both athletes. Sam Castro. And both parents are really good athletes. Except for Alan Sanchez. So, my selection, I'm going to go one offense, one defense. On the offensive side, I'm going to choose Christian De La Cruz. He got four receptions for 51 yards. He averaged 12.8 receptions per yard, but he had a lot of hard running yards after the catch. So Christian worked really hard out there. And, of course, on defense, I mean, I don't mean to be biased, but this kid lives in my house, and I pay for all his stuff. But, <laughs> you know, but for him you take to do the work that he's done at such a young age, I mean, he has seven tackles, yeah, seven solo, solo tackles, solo, yeah. you know, two assisted tackles, and then one tackle for a loss. There's a lot of disruption in her, you know, and I just think that, you know, him being a sophomore also, and I'm really excited about what's to come. You have Oscar Briseño. He's, he's always can be an honorable mention because he is very disruptive, you know, when he gets in the backfield and, and he's just working hard all consistent. the time. He's consistent. You know? Every single game he's showing up, I think. Yeah, we the, always call the, other thing, the other thing I wanted to mention, we are going to be without Oscar Briseño for this week. Apparently he got an injury. I think they said... Uh, concussion. Oh, so wow. we just want to wish Oscar well, get some rest, get better, get back out on the field. And I think there was, um, yeah, I think that's about it on, on that. So that, yeah. that's my take. Well, I wasn't able to make the game, but I did hear about, you know, I was listening to it live. And I would have to say that my MVPs are the defensive line, the front line, and the linebacking core. Um, that's where it all starts. I'm really big on defense because that's where I played. So I'm real fond of that. So good job. I'm really excited about what the future has for us. And uh, guys, keep it up. We look forward to seeing everybody this week at Frank Carter Stadium. With that being said, we're going to take our first commercial break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to 5D's Steakhouse, Woo. Season 4, Episode 4. We're going to start off this segment with a recap in Wildcat Sports. Mr. Adan Sanchez, tell us what's going on. What happened last week? What's going on in the district? Well, last, last week, <clears throat> last weekend, the, the cross-country team, team did go to... The Eagle Pass, they competed at the border, not the border Olympics, but they competed at Eagle Pass. Well, it kind of was they at the border. They didn't run. They ran at the new course, the, yeah, the, the SAC, the it's new little... sports complex. They didn't yeah. run at the golf course like they normally do for um, other reasons. Safety reasons. Safety reasons. But uh, our, at the, the boys did come out first place in the uh, – the, the varsity division. Shout out. They, well, I think out. this first place, is first place. like the third or fourth meet where they do come out first place. The girls did come out second also. There you go. And uh, the they've been teams. coming out second place the past few cross-country meets as well. So they've been doing really well. The the Valerios are still at the helm of these uh, this of this sport. So they've been, doing, they've been doing good for the past six, 
five, six, seven years, if I'm not mistaken. Consistent. Yeah, consistent. In volleyball, I think the coaching, the, the coaching. varsity girls lost their first game this past week against 6A Del Rio. And they're, right now, their record, I believe, six is 6-7-1. 7-1. 7-1. Seven and one. Seven and one. So they were undefeated. By, to me, their big game was a, win, a big win against Eagle Pass. I think they were down 0-2. Um, 0-2 uh, and came out to win three sets to two. So they did win three consecutive sets in, uh, yes, in, in that sport. The boys' uh, freshman team went out to Floresville. They lost They lost a heartbreaker over there. They had a couple of turnovers. It cost us big. Uh, two uh, pick six and a fumble recovery for return for a touchdown. 16 points total on that part. And they did lose 16 to 12 or 31 to 12, that is. Oh. So it was, yeah, it was... It was Pretty tough. It, yeah, it was a tough loss. JV? JV lost 35-0. to zero. They did play here in a, at Frank Carter Stadium. So I think it was the refs. It was probably the refs that, that, yeah, that I don't, yeah, had an refs effect had on that a big one. Part in that, I don't know. In that game. Somebody <laughs> you know, I've, I've heard a lot of good stuff. You normally don't hear that, but I've heard a lot the last couple Positive. of years about the officiating. It's been really great. Perfect. Uh, NFL when, caliber. I think you know, that's what it is. Some of those guys I've heard through the grapevine that have gotten – Offers to go to uh, the college level. Whoa, Roy Martinez, probably Roy Martinez. I think Roy Martinez. Yeah, Roy Martinez. They heard where he was from from the, the BSL. <laughs> my money, my money is on Abel Galvan. Uh, by <laughs> there you go. Both of them. Yeah. I don't know about the head ref. I don't know the guy, white cap guy. I don't white know about cap. that guy. White cap. I don't know about that guy needs to needs to turn it off. I don't Take know. your sunglasses off. <laughs> now, good job, Vern. You're doing a good job. Great job. Uh, let's go ahead and move on. We're going to have preview Cotula this Friday at Frank Carter Stadium. Make sure you listen to The Voice, well, Mr. Ernest once, Flores. Once again, we would like to welcome everybody to come on back to the second home game of the season. I mean, y'all don't know what it does for the kids on the field to turn around and, and see all the stands filled up and everybody cheering. Now, remember, guys, it's only the beginning. The teams are very young. We're very optimistic of this coming game. Uh, the Cowboys come in with a 3-0 record. Yes, sir. So it's going to be a test for the, the, the Wildcats. Anytime a younger school, come, a, a smaller school comes in to face a bigger school, they have a chip on their shoulder and they want to prove their point. They want to knock so, them down. So the Wildcats are going to have to do their best to, to what we talked about earlier, stop that momentum, stop that glass from cracking. So uh, let's start it off, guys. Yes, sir. Yeah, last year... You know, the Wildcats took a, a hard loss, 20-13. to 13. It was kind of a defensive battle at first, and then they didn't score till the end. Um, and then, you know, like, I, like we said, um, they're, they're 3-0. They, they've beaten La Pryor, they've beaten Bishop, and they've beaten Dilly, you know, three 2A schools. Um, Dilly was a common opponent that we both have, both uh, the Wildcats and the, and the Cowboys. And the Wildcats, you know, came up on top 16-12 to 12 on, the, on Dilly. But remember, they were up 16-0. You know, they had the momentum. Um, then the officiating, officiating got involved. We, we talked about that during that podcast. Hey, that and guy, I'm telling you, it's the same guy. <laughs> it is? It's the same guy. <laughs> so he was involved in this game, and that kind of stopped the momentum for the while. Every time the Wildcats drove, you know, stopped the momentum. So they could have piled on, but they didn't. Luckily, they held on to the win. They still held on, even though they had all this adversity. You know, the first game, and first, like we said, new coaches, new, new system, and they still came out with the win. So... Cotula uh, beat Dilly 34 to 7, you know, but Cotula's been together, you know, the team's been together forever, so, but they're, they're, they're playing pretty good this year. So it should be a good game this Friday, I think so. You know, you know they have a series that Cotula and Carrizo has played each other since 1917, if you don't know that, I looked it up. And the series between the two right now is Carrizo's leading 36 wins to 26 losses and seven ties. Seven ties, wow, <laughs> that's a lot of ties, but since 1917, so. That's like well, you know, the 19, day. 1917, they've started playing. Well, my take on the game is that um, Cthulhu is primarily a running team. They got that big running back. And he, he's not only big, but he's also fast. But not a lot of teams so far this season has, a lot of, has had a lot of success against the Carrizo defense. So, sure. you know, if we running can... Running-wise, running-wise. Running-wise, run wise, yeah. Run-wise. If we can contain the run, maybe keep them from getting to the outside... And, of course, we keep them out the secondary. I think it would be okay. But, uh, you know, like I said, Cotula is a running team. And the Carrizo defense, run defense, is, is pretty strong, you know. And I think they'll be just fine if they could just contain that run. And I guess a sleeper, a sleeper for, the, for Cotula is the quarterback, 
The quarterback's more of a scrambler, not much of a thrower. But when he scrambles and he throws, or when he gets, I mean, he does, he, he gets a big plays. Yeah, so he's, he's somebody you got to watch out for. I mean, if we stop, do stop the run, I think they're going to go for him. And, I mean, you got to watch him. He's going to break away. I've seen some film on him where he, he's had some broken runs where he scores from 25 yards out. I guess the prior, he scored a 25-yarder and, and another, or like a 16-yarder, just on runs alone. There were supposed to be passes, but he the, took the, off running. The thing so. that we have going for them is that defensive line is aggressive. Yeah. That defensive line is aggressive. Brian, what do you have to say? What do you I got, about that I got something to say. We're talking about the history of Catula and, and Carrizo. Carrizo Springs Wildcats. A big man just walked into this room that has a lot of history and changed the history of that series. Mr. Big Jeff Ortiz. He's right here. Look, look there. He's right there. Maybe he wants to be on camera. I don't think he wants yeah, to be on camera. He may not want to be up he's here. Too but he's too busy. He's too busy. Jeff kicked the, he's a politician. Uh, so he's got to go around. I believe he, he kicked a 42 yard field know. goal. Hey, Jay. Big Jeff. Big Jay. Jeff. Big J. Mr. Jeff how many, how many yards was the record, Jay? I'm going to tell you your field goal. How many yards? 43. 43, 43 yards. He record. kicked the 43 yards. It still yards. stands to this day. <laughs> to kick the field, winning field goal to knock Catula. Catula would have been in the playoffs for the first time since 1854. I don't know. <laughs> well, they started 1917. 1917. <laughs> All right. But Jeffrey, seconds left in the game. He shut the door on him. He shut the door on him. Seconds left in the game. With his foot. One big toe, man. And, and again, it wasn't soccer style. It was just old school, just straight up, like you know Mark, like Mark Mosey, like Mark Mosey toenail. from the rest of yeah. Big old toenail. That's what we're talking about, folks. You're missing out on the live broadcast. You could have been here. The you could have gotten a picture with Jeffrey. Got some good drinks. You could have gotten is a, signing a Snapchat autograph. with Jeffrey. He maybe would have given him an autograph. <laughs> You're missing out. We look forward to seeing everybody here next week on the live broadcast. We're going to go ahead and take our second commercial break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Back to 5D Steakhouse, <laughs> Season 4, Episode 4. Guys, great segment. Uh, at this time, we have a special guest who's in the crowd. Let's see if we can get him up to the mic. Y'all know his name, but y'all know him by his nickname. His name is Cesar Peralta, but better known to everybody in Wildcat Nation as L Little, Little Dynamite. Dynamite. Let's Little see if Dynamite, we can get him up baby. here. Let's see if we can get him up say, here. He wants to say a few words. Go, I think he say Come a few say words a couple of words. On the state of the Wildcats and So while thoughts. we wait for Mr. Little Dynamite to get here the courage to come Here he comes. Here. All right. Give him a round of applause here. There you go. While we wait, let's uh, get a okay, quick he, rundown he of our sponsors. He was just eating his wings. He was just eating his food, and y'all interrupted him. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, while we wait, let's give a little shout-out for our sponsors once again. He's still chewing on a steak. Look at that. He's still chewing on a steak. Level Healthcare, we have... Yeah, come around. You can come around. Come on this way. Yeah. Here he comes. Well, you know, we'll do the sponsors later. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Little Dynamite. Little Dynamite. Here you go. Good job, Thank you. Cesar, welcome to the show. Uh, you know, we'd just like to get your insight on, you know, a real quick preview of what you have in store or what you have uh, in mind what's going to happen this week against the Catula Cowboys. Um, this past week, well, we've been practicing really hard. This past week, we had a good week of practice. Um, defensively, we're going to throw on some pretty good things. Uh, we're going to have a lot of stunts this week, more than last week. Um, we're going to have a four-man front, stuff like that. It's going to help us pretty good against their O-line. Their, their O-line coach used to be for us, used to work or work here for us, and then he moved over there. But we know a little bit about him, and I think we'll have a good game on this past Friday or coming Friday. <laughs> that that's good stuff. Um, how do you feel, you know, as a, as a player when y'all play at home and you have that home crowd behind you? I uh, you know I talk over and over during the segments about crowd participation and you know everybody wants to be out there when every, your team's winning. But how does it feel when when you do something big and the team does something big? 
you know, do you feel the, the excitement from the crowd? That's a long question. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, <laughs> do I feel the crowd when they're, whenever they're in the game, like with us, do I feel them, like, do, does it excite me? Yeah, it does. Like, that Delhi game, we had a really good game that game, and um, whenever they were cheering us on, it felt, it felt like a home game to me. And I would like that for every home game. A couple games, they're real quiet, and it's, it's kind of bothers me because, it pumps you up. yeah, it pumps me up whenever they're there with us acting like, or, you know, just they're being there for us, you know, supporting us all the way throughout the game. So, Cesar, you're a, a really huge part, a big part of these, uh, the Wildcat defense, right? Because you're out there, and one of the main reasons we call you Little Dynamite is because you add this extra explosion, this extra spark to, to the defensive team, right? So, what message do you have for the opposing team? The, the, the Cthulhu, what are they, Cowboys, Cowboys or whatever? Yeah. What message would you give when it comes to what they need to look out for when it comes to defense for the Wildcats? I would just like to tell them not to underestimate us because we've always been shot down a lot and a lot of us seniors are really tired of it. And we'd like to show this coming year that we're not really all fake. You know, we're here to prove everyone that we're, we've been a team and we're gonna be a team and we're gonna be a good team. And you're there to make a point. Yes. And well, uh, Cesar, you're, you're a senior, right? Yes, sir. So what, what's something you want to pass on to the younger guys? I mean, you have a lot of sophomores. What's something that you want to leave after you graduate, you want them to stay with? I would like for them, I hang out with a lot of them a lot. Um, I would like for them to see, like, not to give up because there's always a fight as long as you're in there. Um, you answer back. You don't let anybody kind of push you down. And me being small, I really try not to because once you let someone push you down, you're going to be like that for the rest of your life. Just don't quit and fight and work hard. For me, Cesar, it's, it's not so much of a question as a, a statement. And I've always loved your energy, your positivity, everything you're, you show out there in the field. And for me, to you, it's just saying, you know what, I, I love watching you out there. I love watching you cheer the crowd, turn to the crowd, and that excitement, that fire. And just for me, my man, just keep it up. I, I know I've known you since you were young and I've watched you grow and your maturity and everything just just keep it up and I don't want to say too much because I don't want to start crying because I'm a crier <laughs> I cry a lot <laughs> Alonzo Alonzo crier. Just keep it Alonzo up, crier. Yes, sir, appreciate it All right. Brian? What? Wait <laughs> Wait Okay, next uh, Well, You took the words out of my mouth I mean, that's true I've watched you play all four years, even since junior high. You've always been an explosive player. Uh, you get the crowd excited, like we do in the press box. Anytime you make a hard tackle or shoot that gap, knock somebody down. Uh, so just continue, continue to the season. And let's finish off this with a good season. Let's get a win, let's get a win Friday and just continue what you're doing, man. Leadership. Leadership is what you show out there. And just, just keep it up. Just keep it up. Thank you, sir. All we got to say is just keep up the good work. Once again, on behalf of uh, Purple Rain Sports, we'd like to uh, thank you for joining us, and we're going to let you get back to your food. <laughs> so uh, we wish you the best of luck, and uh, hopefully we'll come out victorious. We'll see you Friday night. <laughs> I'm a crier. I, I cry a lot. I really do cry a lot. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to go into our last segment, which is the You Pick'em Challenge. Uh, first game that we're picking is obviously the Catula Cowboys versus your Fighting Wildcats. Across the board, Wildcats. we feel that Wildcats are going to take this one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Next game that we're going to be going into is the Pleasanton at Divine. Um, there was four Pleasantons and one Divine. One dissenter, which was uh, Sam Castro, dissented. Sam, you want to give us a reason why you chose that? And we can't use ignorance as a, an excuse. So. Damn. Wow. Who, who did I pick? Divine. 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 You picked Divine to be pleasant, sir. Um, I don't know. Maybe because it's like He's a, war a shorter horse. word. Were yeah. you driving? Were you driving? I, I don't know. 
So you pick Divine? Yeah, just pick okay. Divine. See what happens. All right. All right. Next game is Hondo at Marion. Uh, across the board, Marion was chosen. Yeah, Hondo's not having that good of a year this year. They, they've lost some critical games. So I think that's why we all went with Marion. Uh, next game is uh, the other team versus Cigaroa. Across the board. Across the board, Cigaroa. Yeah. Um, Go Toros. Yeah, let's save some time and let's move on to the next game. <laughs> uh, Pearsall at Eagle Pass win. Once again, across the board, win, win. Yep. is going to win. Win is going to win. <laughs> They've beaten, wins beating Eagle Pass High School. They've, they've had a pretty good season, so yeah, that's why we think we're going to beat Pearsall. Next game, La Prior at Sabana. I was kind of torn about this one, torn with this one, because, you know, the Yellow Jackets normally have a good team. But I had some some uh, inside, information. inside information that La Prior is going to pull this one off. So I actually had uh, Sabana, and I, I text Sosa, and I said, hey, change my pick Flip because it. I, I – Got this info, and I think they're going to take it. So across the board, LaPrior. Now we're going to go into the college level. Auburn at Texas A&M. Woo! Once again, across the board, Texas A&M was the unanimous choice. Yeah, well, one, one, no. went, one went Auburn. Oh, one went Auburn. Sanchez. Oh, Sanchez. Me, I went Auburn because I had a whole bunch of stuff written down. I didn't bring it with me. <laughs> You're tired, Primo. You're tired. You're tired. I am tired. 8,000 steps. I, I honestly, I know AM has been doing good, but I just think Auburn, the Tigers Remember, are Remember, Auburn was down to Oregon. Yeah. And they came back to win, but when they came back to win, it was, you know, they had some lucky shots at the end of the game. It, it, it so was, but I, I, I with, have a I feeling that Auburn, for this game, it was more of a feeling. You have feeding. your reasons. Yeah, I did. You have I your reasons. Remember, but it was Auburn for me. Next game, Oklahoma State at Texas. And again, Once again. Sanchez again. Sanchez. Sanchez. I guess we all know who's going to have the pie in the face. I'll it's going to be a four-way tie <laughs> for the pie. <laughs> hey, that's happened. It happened last <laughs> it week. It happened last week. <laughs> so uh, everybody except Sanchez picked Texas. He picked it, Oklahoma State. You know what? And you know what? UT is, is favored to win by like 60, 60%, I think. But um, it, this, this, this game, for me, it's always been a good one. And you know what? I've always picked Texas on this game. And... Oklahoma State has, whenever I picked them, Oklahoma State has now, come out on top. One thing, but, Oklahoma State has beaten Texas the last two years in a row. Yeah. yeah. But, hey, but wait, that's a whole new team. This is, a, yeah. A whole new team is. for Texas. You know, we gave LSU a good game. We, we but beat But they LSU. lost. I mean. But it was a good game, but they lost. Yeah. And <laughs> where are they playing at? <laughs> they're playing in Texas. At UT. home. Oh, they are. Really. Yeah, they're playing in Texas. <laughs> oh, shit. Daryl Royal Stadium, brother. Oh, crap. <laughs> DRK. DRK Stadium. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see. I, Hook them. Hook them, yeah. Uriagas. Uriagas okay, right there. Hook go. I really do want UT to win. I think you guys picked them because Mike is here. And Mike's they have here, a, so a kid. Sanchez looking at you. That's that, that looking a, at you. They're kids. I love UT. <laughs> but Once I again, we would like to give a big thank win. you on behalf of PRS to the crowd. Second weekers, the Uriagas. Big Jeff. The wives of the, of the crew. <laughs> thank you all for coming out. The Peraltas, everybody yeah, let's here. Let's give a shout out to the VIP tables over here. VIP tables. Uh, now we're going to jump to the NFL level. First game, the Dolphins at the game. Cowboys. Dude, I Cowboys the, are favored by 50, like, 50 like, points. I don't know how they're favored. Hey, by. But did they're the Cowboys like have the easiest schedule? Winning. They have the easiest schedule in the league. I think Cheto could beat all these three teams that the Bro, Cowboys are playing. Uh, you know, and you we know, don't like, have a team no more. I give credit where credit is due. But... Three games in, you can't be talking about Super Bowl yet. No, but you, what are you going to do? It's That's Cowboy what I'm fans. telling you. What are you going to do? What I think they should bring Cowboy uh, fans. They're myopic. Dan myopic Marino Cowboy fans. I, I don't yeah, know. Have to use you, big you know, you know last week, Why? last week, you know, we're talking about the Cowboys like that. The, yeah, they're weak teams. They're winning. You would say the same thing if the Texans were 3-0. and I wish the Texans would have played no, those games. Okay, but but they played, <laughs> the ja- they played the Jaguars. What happened? That we we they, won. No, but what happened? <laughs> Y'all played an amazing game against New Orleans Saints. Super Bowl the caliber. Jaguars defense is good. Super Bowl caliber. The you Jaguars come to the Jaguars, really the most boring 6-3 game. I mean, even yeah, the announcers Jaguars were bored. The announcers wouldn't got a beard. We won. But, uh, yeah. We pulled it out. Yes, but, but barely, barely. No, but one, you win by one, you win by 100. Okay, that's Brian, what I'm saying. Okay. That's, what, okay, that's what I'm saying. If, if the okay, Texans were 3-0, you'd say the same thing. Well, okay, we won. Okay, we won. Okay, okay, okay. Cowboys have won. 
Three and zero. I think Brian said more about the Cowboys than the Wildcats. <laughs> oh, uh, he's a, he's all a right, moving on. Well, I live here. On. Here we moving go. Along. Next game: Texans at the Chargers. Uh, everybody, once again. I picked the Texans. You picked the, no, you picked no, the Chargers. I picked the Texans. No, I picked the I Texans. I think Sosa did that to you on purpose. Dude, that. I picked the Texans. You, you had the Chargers. I put the Texans on there. I remember I put the Texans. Let me just make sure. Let me get back. I'm if sorry. It's, if it's the Chargers on there, it's by mistake because I put the Texans on there. I remember. Adan, he did that to you on purpose. No, I remember. I remember. I remember. He did that to you on purpose. Adan's a hater. <laughs> See, at least choose your Texans. No, he's he's yeah. he's searching, yeah, the next game. Proof is in the pudding. <laughs> next next, uh, next one. So let's go. Let's and it's easy right. because Alan's always the last one to pick. So It wasn't until the next is. two days uh, later, right? Chargers. He didn't have his glasses Proof on, man. is in the pudding. So Alan oh, picked crap. the Chargers. <laughs> he did. He did. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, crap. So we're making a bold prediction. Our hero is going to get the pie next week. Oh, We're going out on a limb here. Maybe. <laughs> All right, next game, the Steelers at the 49ers. Sorry, man. Yeah, sorry. You're no. Right. I'm sorry. And you and know you what? Know, you said you know, no. Y'all know what I'm going to say. You have like, you're in your fourth string quarterback, man. Hey, you might even no, sign no, Kaepernick. No, 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 no. talking about signing Kaepernick. But no, sir. No, er, we're not going to sign er, Kaepernick. Primo, tell them what you sent today on, on that text that you did. You know what a... Uh, uh, Roethlisberger went in on his third game of That's Warriors what I'm talking about. Year or something like that. Hey, I said if you when believe Mason in superst- Rudolph was in the draft. If you believe in superstitions, listen to this. When, when Mason Rudolph was in the draft, that's who I wanted for the Steelers to get because I knew he was the future of the Steelers. Now, a little bit of superstition, the way my cousin's saying, when Ben Roethlisberger came into the league, in his third game, the starting quarterback went out with, guess what? An, an yeah, elbow, an elbow injury. injury. Big Ben went out in the third game with an elbow injury. So, I'm superstitious. Steelers are going to win this game. We're going to shock the world. Steelers <laughs> over the 49ers. And both head coaches at the time, both head coaches at the time, That's a meme. were on their 13th coaching season. Primo, both head coaches were on their 13th. That's it, yes. I'm sorry. So I, I there's there's three season. things that are history repeats itself. Who cares about the Steelers? <laughs> all, all I'm saying is that maybe it was a blessing for Big Ben to go down because he's seen his better days, man. I Yo, think, I think he's done. You and so I, I think, you and I, you I and I have these Rudolph, conversations throughout time, and it's real easy. He's a lineman now. Let me, let, hold on, hold on, because this really <laughs> is an issue with me. This guy to my right always sends text. Does, that are ridiculous and stupid <laughs> to piss me off during a game, right? And he knows that he does it. But if you were a football fan, you would have a football team. This guy yeah. doesn't have a team. I know. He's no. just a hater. A hater All I wanted hater was. Hate. No. Here no, we go. No, no, no. Sosa no. gave us a scenario. No, sir. He said, no, sir. if the Texans win and the Steelers lose, I won't have to be stinky pick. No. So that's my only, what was that's your, my only okay. goal. Okay. This guy has an excuse for it. The week before, he was like, I was driving and I didn't know and I didn't know the score and oh the Steelers were losing oh god yeah that this guy primo, so y'all already just, worked me up primo I just want you to know primo you primo you just sounded exactly like him yeah right he now. does I know what damn do all anyway, right Steelers are gonna win but Sanchez, I picked the Sanchez, Steelers Sanchez, and if you don't well, think if you think the 49ers are gonna Sanchez win you can put a start, start a line right here Sanchez and I picked who the 49ers the, who wants the first ass kick <laughs> We picked the 49ers I put to win. the Steelers. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Here we go. They picked the 49ers. They did. These guys over here. We picked the I don't want to hear why you picked them. The Steelers are going to win. Moving on. Moving on. They're, they're playing San Francisco. Next game. That's my Hold on. Game. Somebody has San some water. Two, no. Bag of ice, please. <laughs> they played pretty good. Last man. game. Last game. Last game of the, of, of the You Pick Them Challenge. And just before we get to that, we would like to thank everybody who, who participates week in and week out. Uh, we haven't forgot about you. Um, we would like to encourage more people to participate in the You Pick em Challenge. And uh, we'd like we're going to thank go- the Javelin, the Javelin yeah. for posting it there and make sure you check it out and try and put your, your names in there, your, your teams, who you think is going to win. The oldest newspaper in Texas Woo-hoo. since 1854. 
Damn, Brian, you wouldn't know that. The oldest newspaper, not the oldest people that own the newspaper, but the oldest newspaper. Okay, this next game, always we added the Bears for one of our platinum sponsors, Mr. Rick De La Fuente, and Smoke and D's Competition Barbecue. Uh, They're going to be going out to the competition at the Fairplex. October 19th. In town, I believe. October 19th at the Eagle Ford Fling here in town. We'll be competing there against other, other teams, so... Make your way out there to the sample Eagle Ford Fling. Get out there and sample some food. Yeah, sample some food. We'll have plenty of food and if, whiskey. If you don't, if you're not aware on these competition barbecue things, it's like free food over there, man. Yeah, you know, all the time. Yeah, that stuff for yes. free. We yeah, give we the food. We don't eat what we do. Yeah, you can go. You can go over there <laughs> and, with, and, uh, and a lot of whiskey. And they, they if, disperse hey, you got, adult if beverages. If you guys <laughs> have the same problem I do, your wife probably blood, probably don't cook that much. So <laughs> at least that day you're gonna get a free meal. So the whole family. Out. You can take I'm the whole family out. Take my wife's here, so I'm going to say my wife cooks really yeah. good, hey. really well. My boys I really are like hungry. her food. My kids are hungry. The you know? one in a million times she cooks. So, so you only say that because your wife's in here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, those microwave, you only those say microwave, microwave dinners, dinners are here. good, man. Microwave. You only say that All when right. she's present. Ne- next game is the Chicago Bears at the Washington Redskins. Uh, it was 4-1 to one Bears. Uh, Mitchell Trubisky, man. I don't, I don't know what's going on. That's but, why I went to Redskins. I think the Redskins uh, I secondary is going to tear him up. So I don't, I I don't, like, I don't like the way Trubisky Who's the Redskins playing. quarterback? Uh, K- Case Keenum. Case Keenum? Case Keenum. For the Redskins? Redskins. Yeah, nah, it's all right. He got that ass beat. Yeah. Ah, he almost brought him back against the Cowboys. Almost there. And then against the Bears defense? Are you kidding me? Nah, he'll be all right. Come on. He'll Come on, right. son. But you chose the Redskins. <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> now we're going to head into... The You Pick em Challenge results for last week. We have a big, a big shout out to somebody that actually got 100%. Woo. 11 out of 11 picks. Man, that's, that's hard, man, because when you go into picking high school teams, like you really don't know much about them. NFL, you hear about them. College games, you see them on Saturdays. But high school games, it's tough to pick them, man. And this guy got 11 out of 11. That's uh, Eddie Nava. Eddie isn't Nava isn't that our second 100 percenter? Second 100 percenter. This 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 go round. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, you know, no. Ed, Eddie has always participated in this, and I remember him being dead ass last several Most, uh, times. Yeah, a lot of times. Yeah. So that's yeah. just this just goes to show, guys, if you dream big, you can win big. <laughs> Eddie, you, you did it. <laughs> Eddie, you did it. Do your homework, hey, Eddie. Uh, special shout out to. <laughs> To Hector Navarro, last week he almost got it. He missed oh, it by one yeah. game, and that was the a UT game. game. The UT yeah. game. He picked UT instead of um, um, LSU. 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 <laughs> LSU. So yeah. Weren't you at that game? I was at that game. <laughs> you have to wear Damn. a cap, a hat, don't you? I gotta wear a hat now. An LSU hat. An LSU hat for a week. At, at least work. it matches Carrizo. So, so uh, stats. Do you want to go ahead and give us a rundown of last week's yes. pick 'em challenge results? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, uh, um, you have Eddie Nava, number one, who had 100. percent He had 11 out of 11, and then you had about. Yeah, about seven people who were tied for second place. Yeah, I can't even see. You know, Alfredo Dominguez, that guy had second place. And a couple weeks ago, he had 100%. So that's the guy, the other guy who had 100. So he's been up there, that Alfredo Dominguez. I, if I, I put all the percentages together, he's going to be probably up there. Because, you know, he got 82%, 100%. Man, this thing is bright. Damn, son, you need to make those letters bigger. Jesus. Yeah, I, I can see him. Uh, Patrick Flores, who's from Crystal City, he's also 82%. Fernando de Esma. Roy Martinez. He's from Mario. where? Cheto. What did Roy you say? Martinez. BSL. Roy Martinez the BSL. from BSL. Barrio San Luis. Cheto. Nine out of 11. Cheto, Cheto you Texas. remember that one time that you told him, you mean to tell me that your sister got hematoma? <laughs> hematoma. <laughs> Arnold Munoz. Arnold Jackson. We used to call him Arnold Jackson. Oh, Munoz. Arnold Jackson's in there. Nine and 11. Actually, um, Jackson. Nasty if you're Jackson. Perennial, perennial top tenner, Mari Cepeda. She's always been a top ten. She's always, yeah, Mari. even though she never hits first, but she's always been top ten. Why do you got to use big words? What's perennial mean? It means happens every time. Alan. That's what it means. Yearly. Why did you just say happens dictionary. every time? Why do you have to use perennial? And then uh, then we go into the, the, the people who were tied for eighth place after uh, those seven. You had um, officer, I don't know an officer anymore. It's Zach Bradshaw. Yeah, he's, a, he's an officer. Deputy. And a friend of the, of the Purple Rain Sports, Luis Briseño, used to be on with us before. You know, he's, he's up there also, 8 of 11. Randy Herrera, big Randy. Randy. Randini. Vale Mendoza, Alonso Mireles. You know, he was on last year for one yeah. of our shows. UT fan. UT fan, uh, loyal listener. Likes to hate on uh, Lakers a lot. I don't like him. <laughs> Eli Munoz. And Texans. 8 of 11. Leo Navarro, 8 of 11. Uh, Elias Ramos. You know, he sends me his picks. Is he from, is he in Carrizo? He's not in Carrizo. Who's that? Elias Ramos. 
No, he doesn't live here. He doesn't live here. He's, but he's, he's Ernest's his classmate. Okay, he sends in his picks all the time in the 8 of 11. Uh, and then Javi Bustamante, 7 of 11. Beto Guevara, who's, remember, uh, he had a, uh, from the team from the north. Uh, Hector Navarro, 7 of 11. Uh, Mariso Nieto, uh, he's up in Austin. Wow. Uh, and then, you know, Ohio State graduate, by the way. Always traveling. He's 7 of 11. Mario Vargas lives in Rock Springs, I believe. Think so. I think now. He's a deputy. And Juan Montalvo, a poor guy. Juan Montalvo had 1 of 11. <laughs> so he's kind of like Alan. Uh, no, not me. Poor guy. <laughs> this is his first time. So. so let's give a big shout. We want to give a big shout out to everybody that participated. It's just letting you know that the You Pick em Challenge with Purple Rain Sports has actually gone international, right? Because yes, we got people from everywhere chiming in, sending in their picks. They're challenging the PRS crew, and I can honestly say that we are losing miserably against the pigs. So and right well, now, we want to bring in somebody. Ernest, let you want to bring in somebody? Let amongst us. Amongst us, Adan Sanchez and myself tied for first place. Like, like you know, I'm always for the first place. So. You know Nobody what? really just, cares about that. The so habits, they care about first. the pie. Who and it came last? down to the very last pick because the, last, the very last game, Mr. Sam, BDE, and, and Brian were all tied for last place. And then, unluckily for Mr. Mr. Perez there. Um, I'm a perennial. Hey, but you know what? I, I, I kinda, I, you know what? I, mean, uh, I, I kind of caught on to your deal. <laughs> we all send you the picks. No, I do them first. I don't even look, we even don't look see at what you pick. He no. edits them. So no. this guy sees who everybody's picking. Look, and then I'll, he's got the inside, inside I scoop. I never pick anything like y'all he, pick. So he, he edits. Can't. You know damn well that you pick opposite of what Brian's picking. <laughs> yeah. You know damn well. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it, you caught yeah. me. Damn it. Hey, guys. At like this time, we'd like to welcome welcome up to the stage one of our platinum sponsors, Mr. Charlie from 5D Steakhouse. Charlie, right if you want to say a couple of words. He's the man in charge. The man, the in, man charge in charge. So 5D. don't forget to come on down and see Charlie at 5Ds. There we go. He's got a special pie. He's got a special pie here for uh, Brian Perez. The stinky pig. Okay, then. Hello, everybody. Good evening, everyone listening and tuning in. My name is Charlie Delgado, and I'm the manager here at our Carrizo Springs location. I just want to encourage the community to come out and follow and like the Purple Rain page, first of all. Woo! The podcast, these guys work extra hard to bring you guys all the updates on the Wildcats. So sure. please, please, please show some love and support to these gentlemen. There you go. There you also, go. don't forget to stop by 5D Steakhouse and see the podcast live. You, um, you definitely won't be disappointed in joining us. Sir, yes, sir. We're always ready to serve you guys and thank you guys for everything that y'all do for the community. Keep it up and keep up the awesome job. Um, all, I, all I can say is, damn, son, you want to write my intro? You know what, Where? Charlie? Man, I'm, that was I really, good, Charlie. I cry sometimes, but... Man, you've been crying on this I, podcast. I cry man. a lot. I, I'm a crier. <laughs> hey, I, I hey cry. don't forget, Charlie, on, <laughs> win, <laughs> Char, Charlie, on Wednesdays, it's $3. Yes, you call it. You call it. You so... Call it. You call it three dollars. So make your way on down. We normally broadcast on on Tuesdays. Today's you call it. You're missing out on two things: the you call it for three dollars, and you're missing out on some live entertainment. Some good week, right here. Good week, right here. Yeah, Wednesdays is you call it. Tuesdays is Purple Rain and Walkout Special. All of that good stuff. So at this time, we're gonna ask Charlie Delgado, manager of 5D, to do the honors of this week's stinky pick to our one and only number 51. Y'all know me. Y'all know him. <laughs> it's a perennial, Adan. Hey, but you know what, Brian? People are forgetting how you look because they don't see you with the whipped cream anymore. It's okay. In public. I, don't, I don't care. It's four weeks in a row, Brian. Damn. I'm in, I'm in the, I'm in the press box. Pie. Brian likes pie. That's the whole Damn, thing. Damn, son. He enjoys the pie. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Brian, you that. Why are you My laughing? My favorite. <laughs> oh, damn, Brian. We picked the same. Yeah. We I'm might be there. I'm, uh -oh. I'm at risk, folks. I'm at, <laughs> I'm at risk. Oh, you picked Savinal, all right. Savinal. Here we go at this time. The honorary Charlie is going to get Brian with the stinky pick of the week. Brian has to pull, get his towel, the one that he normally carries around for the body. <laughs> Hey, Brian, you're like, after they win the championship with the pie, with the champagne. 
All right, everybody in the crowd, let's do it from three, two, one. Ready? Three, two, one. Once again, folks, you're missing out. You're not joining us on the live podcast. We would like to thank everybody for listening again. Season four, episode four. We look forward to seeing everybody this week at Frank Carter Stadium for the matchup between the visiting Cthulhu Cowboys and your career Springs Fighting Wildcats. Thank you all for joining us. Good podcast. Good night.